Dr. Zura and Handy in the audience. Feel free to pick, poke fun, poke holes in uh, anything we've you done. Come up and down right no, you can. I, I trust your ability to speak up from where you're sitting. That, that, that'll be good. So a couple of trauma cases. Uh, Burgess, you're lucky you're not the only resident here like in the breakout session, so we can ask other people questions. We'll jump right in. It was rapid fire, but it can be extra rapid fire since we've got just a few minutes left. That's true. So this is a referral from a ski slope injury, 24-year-old female, um, high school teacher, uh, lacrosse coach, very active, uh, likes to run, uh, ski in some double black diamond in the woods kind of deal, and um, had a twisting injury uh, to the right knee. So one of the residents, who, whoever feels good about talking about this, uh, tell, tell me what you see and uh, what you're worried about. Yeah, yeah. good. Um, so, so it can be a variation on knee dislocation. So femur condyles travel with that medial tibial condyle. Uh, can put a lot of pressure on the neurovascular structure. So good exam. Um, and so here's some CT cuts. Trust that those are representative. Uh, what do you think now? It's probably some articular packages. This place might be time. For, for the panel or other folks who take care of this injury, what are your sources of heart when you're talking to this patient? Uh, what are you worried about being particular challenges in terms of taking care of? I mean, partial articular injury needs a buttress plate, no big deal, right? Yeah, I think the lateral plateau of impaction of the medial, it's probably the medial piece is difficult to deal with. And then uh, certainly the spine, what about ACL economies? Yeah, so big, big eminence fragment. We'll show some of the surface renderings from the 3D uh, recons. So uh, you, know, you can see kind of the uh, almost extending lateral. So posterior, posterior lateral apex for that fragment. Uh, big, big central fragment with presumably ACL and your more lateral disc attached to it. So a lot of years discussion or thoughts on surgical plan, approach, positions. I didn't tackle that. Oh, sorry. These are these are fractures that I find incredibly challenging because they're combined soft tissue and bony injury. And it's really hard to see that lateral impaction from the medial side. So you have to figure out some way to decide if your lateral side is built up. You have to have some way to analyze the soft tissue stability once you're done with all the bony work. I think the, the easiest part is putting the medial cortex back together. If you did that, you'd create that medial side. But um, there's the forces that are uh, aligned in creating this fracture create problems sort of almost 360 degrees around the knee. And I've been very uh, humbled by these fractures over the years because I haven't been able to effectively find a way to restore all the anatomy. Typically, it's some sort of trade-off. You might get the bones back and, the, and they have some residual subluxation or laxity or trends in different directions. Uh, it can be very challenging to see that lateral side, as Dr. Reed, um mentioned. We've tried, tried scoping them, tried opening that side, tried visualizing it with two incisions, and uh, I've been unsuccessful in finding a, a, an approach that works every time. Any of the trauma folks in the crowd got any pointers or tricks that uh, you've been thinking about that we should have talked to you about several months ago? <laughs> I would agree with Dave. I mean, that they are tough. The only one I hate, yeah, I mean, I hate the ones that <clears throat> exit primarily in the medial plateau, same pattern, but instead of it coming up on the lateral side of the eminence, you know, you've got depression or whatever on the medial side, and there's really no way to see that well. I mean, I still look at that as like, I think of the uh, medial plateau as the sustentacular or, or uh, you know, constant segment right. that you're that you're buttressing into so I would still do a lateral approach, and I, I think um, I would suture that uh, the uh, eminence or get up in the, you know, the ACL and the root and try to pull that down. And do that with scope? Um, no. Uh -uh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. 
and a couple of these scope assisted and fellowships, just like they were saying, like, yeah, great, I can see that piece. Perfect. I can't do much. Now, what can that. I do about it? Yeah. No, it's not reduced, but not like the size reduced. of the fragment impact, whether you do it open or scope assisted. Uh, that big piece we try to do anything about with scope, but sometimes it's just a little. It's, it's there as a reduction check with an scope. That, that's like setting. It's, it's essentially having to use it in the game. It's a field piece. But you're looking at it as you try to develop. But then you can't really, it's not a great way to fix, fix it. So you end up with a medieval model anyway. So you wonder if it's going to do anything for the problem. That'd be hard for me to get into collateral side. We just jumped to what we did. Um, clinical implants. I mean, I, I don't know. Really something about these being mini <laughs> straightforward, small brag plates. Um, position. If it was supine. From oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm right. Try to roll two times. Uh, yeah, it depends on the exit. It really depends on the exit point and where all the attachment is. But this would look like it was primarily more anterior or central as opposed to post. So, post at the exit point, but all the attachment is more central. Than the gotcha. All right. Well, two. We did. And we'll see. So, these are finals. So we went pro. <laughs> We're going to use this little gas truck to be able to reach across. And trust when I say this plate is on the apex. This one's up. This one's supporting the um, posterior aspect of that major condylar fragment. Uh, we were able to access the impaction just by pinning the muscle reflection back into the intact bone, lift that up, get some bone graft in, um, and the top screws that makes on plate supports that. Reasonably, you know, it's it's, it's not a great uh, expansive view for sure. Close all that up. Loop supine. Hate doing two positions for one case, but uh, I think this is a good one for it. Did a full medial arthrotomy just based on that fragment size. I just didn't think we could reasonably control it uh, with sutures or scope assisted approach and uh, put headless screws back. So uh, she's still uh, six seven weeks out, so it's still early, but. Uh, and I just thought it was a, an interesting case as far as a little different than anything I've done uh, to have to be that far posterior lateral to address the, the apex of that fracture. We intentionally left the medial side alone, um, just based on MCL attachments, trying to be respectful of soft tissue. Um, did put some additional compression screws through once compression, once position um, for these medial to lateral screws. You need a posterior medial approach or direct you know, direct posterior, posterior. Posterior that goes across off the tool. Pretty split the gastric heads or you lift it up. Medial and lift it up laterally. Yeah. I think that's it. Anything differently? I mean, I, I think to do a medial lateral approach on that, I have a hard time addressing the eminence in a, uh, a meaningful way. You probably see over to it through that lateral approach, but hard to know how to fix it. You want that delivered in an X fix or a <laughs> 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 this, this knee immobilizer. I think that's appropriate. You know, it, it clearly sprang down to a point that the femoral condyle uh, reach. The good thing, you know, oh, <laughs> yeah, femoral condyle at one point came down to here. So had some potential for instability, but I think there's enough soft tissue intact that it comes back and everything was well aligned and all. So, did you get the injury films or is that the one? Yeah. That length is pretty well established. Yeah, your agree. point, you know, when those are overlapped, if they if they come and they're and they're and the pieces are still lined up on each other, then an external fixer is really helpful. This and the immobilizer is generally fine because it's out. So, you know, yeah. that piece is tilted and, and clearly there's been a problem, but. Right now, it's, it's this relationship looks very reasonable. Is that condyle is trying to sit further and further medial? Let's try to think about a um, X fix in order to make the flight back to Colorado, which is what she was doing. When this piece is, you know, down here, that's that's where that external fix is. Really so, um, so it was a thirty-two-year-old. Uh, dog walking injury had a depressed plateau or a plateau fracture that was recognized. The severity, not necessarily. Uh, I have 
persistent pain showed up a couple months later. Um, and, you know, difficulty walking, difficulty returning to activity. Um, and what we'll get into is that the uh, exam was significant for valgus alignment on both sides. You know, like, oh, you had sort of this knock knee alignment all your life. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, people always talked about me, made fun of me about that. Um, and so, you know, I thought the, the interesting point for discussion is how does that impact your overall plan? Uh, should it impact your overall plan? And I, I think we've been learning some lessons the hard way that maybe it should. Um, so, open it up to the panel for what your thoughts might be if you saw this in clinic and, um, you know, there's something you'd offer surgery, you know, maybe let's say 10 degrees of valgus instability uh, on, on exam and clearly has not done great from a clinical perspective as far as return to activity. Uh, yeah, I mean, coronal stability, obviously, kind of the hallmark of treatment of plateau injuries, number of priorities of restored coronal stability. It sounds like she doesn't have it at the moment. Um, so lack of coronal stability and unable to return to previous function, I think you can start looking at things that you could do if she's otherwise a reasonable surgical candidate. Based on that CT, it looks like it's healed in that position at this point. Um, it's not a nod you need to work through, but you have to do osteotomy if you think that you need to bring the joint up. You talked about her native alignment on both sides. I don't know, was that ever a problem for her? The anogamy, did she have any? These are up together a little bit. And you all can speak too close, but she's oh, not fine. You don't mind. Yeah, so I, I think to uh, discuss uh, osteotomy and uh, trying to subchondral so osteotomy, like proximal metaphyseal or like uh, HTO. The residency, anything you want to know, other information? Uh, other limb alignment. So hip, the ankle alignment belt. There you go. All right. What do you think? It's her bone health. Like, those cortices are pretty thin. Her bone is pretty osteopenic looking for a 32 year old who walks dogs. So it's just weaker exercise. Um, I have specific thoughts about it. No major red flags from conversation or history. Sounds like a bone in her country as well. <laughs> Big dog. Big dog. Big fast dog. Yeah. She able to actually put weight on it comfortably because I've had some problems getting. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's, problem. yeah. she's walking around with a cane at this point and has tried to get back, but just can't go back to her job. Mm -hmm. Specifically, it's interesting because it doesn't look that different from the other side. So I'm kind of surprised that there'd be so much instability on exam. What are her medial structures feel like on exam? Did you say that right? Uh, she has a firm endpoint. My sense from exams is she's kind of fallen into that lack of lateral support, uh, but you know, nothing, no soft endpoints would suggest uh, yeah, yeah, significant soft tissue injury, though. Yeah. Get an MRI at this point, the evaluation will be the time. Uh, uh, you can think kind of where we were talking, but it's, um, Thinking about well, you know, do we want the mechanical axis to cross or on the medial side? Our experience, my experience, we've talked about some. It's been, you know, plateau fractures that are in valgus are already overloading that side. A little bit challenging to promise this patient you're going to just restore that impacted, uh, concave and healed lateral condyle back to a normal convex shape. Uh, so jump into uh, I was just kind of planning for where you can see where that would have the mechanical axis cross, um, you know, twelve degree correction. So um, we did kind of bifocal osteotomy um, and very uh, producing and cross the mechanical axis uh, mostly to where we had planned. You know, it's still a little kind of more middle of the eminence instead of just to the medial side um, and. So that uh, contact with the remains, but overall stability felt much better um, in terms of evaluating it at the knee joint and then her overall limb alignment. If she's in more varus on this side, looks a, a lot more like you'd expect, which still looks like significant valgus. <clears throat> um, 
uh, on the other side. So, um, she's a couple months out, uh, fully weight bearing, back to work, steward retail or something. She has to do a little bit of walking. Uh, you know, see how she ends up work, working out long term. I, I do feel better having that lateral side offloaded because we know that it, it's going to have some pathology in terms of arthritis risk or uh, pain from overload or mechanical axis is predominantly there. So you, you said you did two osteotomies? One at the joint to try to correct some of the concavity. So what? what how did you do that? What, was it intra, you did intraarticular or you cut the cortex? Uh, osteotome, say centimeter below, eight millimeters below the joint. That's under your plate? That's supported by the plate, bone grafted at that site, um, fixed with a bunch of original fixation, and then carried the saw and finished with an osteotome. Did you come through this? You came through the medial side, or you did it just sort of through Cantella's bone? Tried to stop the medial side, probably cracked it a little, but you know, soft tissues were intact and thought it was reasonably aligned. And then <clears throat> got as much graft in there as we could to provide additional body support during the healing process. So you can see how much we opened it here. Do you have any new long leg gums yet? Do we want to know? <laughs> so, so, so I say that obviously in jest, but yeah, it's probably straight. I mean, good academic exercise. I don't think it's going to change anything clinically, so we did not repeat those. I was just wondering what if you approach this from the femur? Do the BFO open the wedge because they're native alignments and soft. So I've done that for people who um, failed their lateral fixation only. It isn't necessarily like they had a reasonable reduction. Symptomatically, we're not doing well, and we've done DFO and had a better outcome from that. We looked specifically at femur and tibia anatomy in terms of the planning and felt like much performance was coming from the tibia. In the interest of keeping as level as possible at joint line, I don't know. I don't know that it's well established in the literature how much that matters. I think it makes intuitive sense that level is good, but I don't think there's great evidence to support that. You know, is six degrees acceptable? Is it? I, if anybody knows, please tell me. I tried to, you know, in, in thinking about cases like this, I've tried to look that up in the past. Um, and I can't say there's a hard number that comes to mind. And you would say DFO and interfocal yes. osteotomy? So yeah. you, because I, I thought for this femoral angle was abnormal on both sides, contributed to getting the fracture to begin with, correct or align with the DFO, and then just do something smaller on the tibia to restore the joint. Was <laughs> trying to press the alignment of the joint, take the stress off your what you've elevated. Perhaps. So I think some people would say, "Oh, just do the osteotomy." But if you don't do the interfocal part too, and then you'll still have, you'll still be unsafe. In certain stances, probably not all of the cases. Yeah. Did you um, I assume one of the, the challenges I found with these when you're trying to fix them with uh, you know osteotomy plates are kind of designed for these. Oftentimes we use fracture plates, but you can sometimes hose yourself by putting the plate down to the bone. We've gone for back to the plate shape, not the shape you want it. So I noticed she's locking screws in the shaft to help prevent that. So um, you would, uh, so that your alignment, you get your alignment corrected and then use the plate as a holder, placeholder for that as opposed to, a lot of times we'll put this plate all the way down to the bone, but that's it. that would actually create some goblins deformity, most likely in this case. So you do all this work to get your alignment. You lose this, you turn it Push it over at the last moment, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, you know, we know alignment rods are far from perfect science, so you can put it wherever you want, but uh, that was an honest effort. So you probably should get some standing films just in, in terms of evaluating the process, but uh, so far she's doing well clinically. I think obviously, certainly if she started having more problems, that would be a first step. All right. I'm going to take it away. Uh, I don't know how to get a I can be pretty 73 year old <laughs> ground level fall. <laughs> I'm younger than that, really 60s, but oh, okay. Maybe. All right. So, uh, <laughs> just like a uh, SCR patterning fracture, uh, some uh, posterior lateral subluxation of the talus. Uh, it looks like there's a posterior mouth fracture as well. Yeah. Get a CT scan on that. Show of hands who's taking care of this. Get the CT scan. I was just something like that. Uh, what, what do you get a CT scan on this particular image? This particular all trimals all, all, all tri are concerned for trimals and CTs. So, to see the size of the posterior fragment, mm -hmm. 
see the size, see the shape, see the, you know, all, all of that. Consideration for fixation posteriorely or just so you know what the synesmosis is doing. Yeah, you know, the studies show that you may change your approach, you may change yeah. how you fix them. Uh, but yeah, so for, for all of those reasons. Uh, that being said, I fix fewer and fewer posterior males than I used to. I, just, I don't find that it's as satisfying as everyone claims it is. Uh, and I can't see my syndesmosis the way I want to see it. And I'm finding that I'm still finding them unstable after fixing the posterior males. And I'd like to see the syndesmosis from the front. So if I could make an argument to not fix it from the back, I, that's what I do. Yes. Change masks for anybody. Fix the posterior. No, Mike would do. Is that fragment change your approach? So you say, well, it's a little wafer, not that much of the surface area. The you know PITFL integrity may have as much to do with whether or not you fix it as a percentage of the um, articular surface. Uh, I don't guess. Probably the age would play a role in this one. So I mean, if sixty-five or seventy-year-old. I don't think I would. I don't think I'd go back there and fix it. I don't think I'd, I think I'd ignore that fight because they were all county champions. <laughs> <laughs> all county champions. Must be perfect <laughs> reason that they don't need an extra scar. You know, yeah. scarring. <laughs> yeah, I actually likes to recreationally roads like 50 plus miles. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I always worry about those little fragments because uh, typically a wafer like this on a poster mail, I won't fix because there's just too many value if there's a more size to it or more instability or you test them and they're, they're subluxing at the back but um, i would probably just leave this one alone um, stabilize the lateral meat of side of the <coughs> so i think you're right when sometimes you fix the back and they're still off in the front etf aitf is out and so there's and they're still rotationally unstable or potentially even translationally so then you put it in this box screw in anyway or device of choice uh, so I, I like fixing the poster mount in larger segments or when it's contributes to instability. I just don't think this is a big contributor. You would have a big chunk in there and then displacement. Not in, not in this level. You're talking about like non-impact activities like road biking and things. I think if there were someone who liked to run or someone who liked to do more impact stuff when we were younger, I would probably do that. A couple other cuts, um, three fragments. You can tell us if that changed management. So you want to tell us about position to approach this. You obviously fixed the posterior fragment. What'd you do with that um, interposed piece? And uh, I do not the dysmosis after you buttress plated the posterior lateral fragment. Yeah, so in this case, she came and saw me on a Tuesday. It was late in the afternoon had time the next day so plan was to add her on the next day i was not going to get a ct scan then i was sitting there the night before looking at it's like i'd really like to know more about what's going on i was planning on based on the x-rays i was not planning to fix post here i was going to fix medial lateral assess in as most probably put in some transcendence body fixation but i was questioning enough that i ended up getting a CT in pre-op. So I do all my search at the main hospital. And as soon as she showed up, I just had her go down and get a CT scan because um, I just wasn't sure. And I was happy that I did. It did change what I did in this case. Um, I didn't like the idea that that posterior malleolus was perched so far away from where it was supposed to be. And so I did go in and excise that fragment that was holding it up and then reduce the the ITFL with that fragment. And then those pieces in the front of the joint had no idea they were there based on x-rays. And so that did, I don't know that I would have recognized them or not on the floor. And so, because I knew they were there, I went in and got them out of the front of her joint. Go back to the do a CG yeah. scan. Two to three pieces oh, across the front. So you went prone then supine or you went lateral? All supine, uh, just rolled big internal rotations. A big fan of prone. I'll, I'll go prone for most, but it was a pretty small fragment. Um, and I thought I'd be able to, uh, I wasn't planning, there was no impaction. Sometimes with impaction, there's a lot more work you have to do back there, but I thought it was a uh, fresh enough fracture would be easy enough to pull it down and buttress it. Uh, supine just rolling over. Uh, 
think we'll stop there in the interest of time.